In the last session, we looked at cooking pots because we were boiling pulses. This session is on cooking in dishes and the Romans had a particular kind of shallow, fairly shallow dish called a patina, which also gave its name to the dishes that were cooked in it. So we are going to be cooking two patinae. One of them is uh, from pears and the other one is uh, from greens. Many patinae are bound with egg and they come out, some of them, with, as a sort of custard. That This is how I'll be cooking the pear uh, patina. Uh, usually it doesn't tell us how many eggs to use with what proportion of other ingredients. So it's a bit of a bit of a guess. Other patinae are bound with uh, wheat starch and some of them don't seem to have anything to bind them at all so it's difficult to know just exactly what everybody understood by patina. But we'll be cooking two examples just to show you some of the things that uh, can be cooked like that. The new ingredient for this dish is passum, raisin wine, which the Italians still make under the name of Vinsanto. It's made from grapes which have been partially dried, concentrating the sugars. And if it is fully fermented, it results in a very strong, quite dry wine with a rich taste, similar to Madeira, although that's made differently. But if the sugars are not allowed to ferment completely, then you end up with a very sweet wine, but like similar to a dessert wine. We start with pears. And we cut them up and we core them. It, the recipe from Apicius just says clean them inside. doesn't say anything about peeling them, so I just follow the instructions as they are. We're boiling the pears in a pan in some hot water, enough to come over the top, and once they've come to the boil, we'll give them 10 minutes. The pears are now cooked and drained, so we chop them up and put them in the blender. We could, of course, use the mortar to make this dish, and that's what the Romans would have used, but in modern kitchen, it's much easier in the blender. If we were using a mortar, we'd have to chop them very small, but with a blender, it doesn't, man it doesn't matter so much. And we also add half a teaspoonful of ground cumin, a little freshly ground black pepper, Spoonful of honey, and half a tablespoonful of passum. But as this recipe also has honey in it, I am using a Madeira type one on the assumption that probably you wouldn't want two sweeteners. So we're going to give this a quick whiz. And then we need to add the eggs. 
the eggs only have to be very lightly beaten, so that's why we don't actually put them in the blender with the pears. I'm using three eggs but we don't really know how many would have been used because the recipe doesn't say it's just a question of finding something which is to your taste thoroughly and put the mixture in the lightly oiled oven dish. You can butter it if you want to, it is actually easier, but uh, the Romans at least the Romans in the Mediterranean didn't use butter at all. Other than there's a base for ointments. Butter was something that other people used as far as they were concerned. We also need to add half a teaspoonful of fish sauce which I nearly forgot. This adds to the intensity of the flavour without being at all noticeable. And then we put it into a bain marie. This isn't part of the instructions for this recipe, although it is used for other recipes. It does help to get a good set. So we pour boiling water into the container outside and then put it into our preheated oven at 180 degrees centigrade. That's 350 Fahrenheit. If your oven is pan assisted, you might need to modify the temperature, but be guided by what it says in your instruction book. And we'll leave that to cook for an hour. The exact timing may differ depending on the size and shape of your oven dish. A shallower dish will cook it sooner. There's our hour up and we'll take it out and see what it looks like. Nice and firm on the top, and it wants a dusting of pepper. It can be eaten hot as it is now, or it can be allowed to cool.
and have it either warm or cold. This second recipe is for veg a vegetable patina. It's specified as being for asparagus, more particularly the, the inedible bits of asparagus or the very stringy bits of asparagus that you can't eat as asparagus tips. And, and they would be passed through a sieve and the resultant puree mixed with herbs and spices and baked uh, in the oven. Uh, the following recipe is the same but for a variety of different vegetables, of which the most easily available is, uh, is caulicoli, which is the Latin for the flower stems of kale shoots, or in our terms, it would be more like a tender stem uh, broccoli because it's a, uh, it, it's a summer, uh, it's, it, it's a summer vegetable. I'm not going to go through all the steps, all the steps of this recipe because it, in fact, it's, it's more or less exactly the same as the pear patina, but with different ingredients. We have 250 grams of broccoli. We have five, uh, 50 grams of onion, a bunch of coriander, a teaspoonful of savory, which is a a herb very similar in taste to oregano so if you haven't got savory then just replace it with oregano and for the spices we add a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper and an eighth of a teaspoonful of lovage lovage is a herb you're more likely to find in the garden center than in the supermarket it's used very frequently in the recipes of apicius and it always comes right at the beginning among the seeds. So we assume that it, it must be the seeds that, that are used, although the leaf is actually also aromatic and very much the same flavour. So it is possible to use that if your lovage plant um, hasn't yet born seed. Uh, an alternative is aniseed, which the encyclopedist Pliny gives as a possible alternative to lovage, and that's more obtainable. But in either case, you need to parch the seed before you grind it. And then there is two, ta two teaspoonfuls of fish sauce or a vegetarian substitute, a tablespoon of oil, and uh, one of the variants is with egg, so I'm, I'm adding an egg. Uh, there's another variant which uh, includes uh, chicken, which is placed underneath the vegetable puree, and uh, then the whole thing is baked in the oven. But as I'm only using one egg, I'm not using a bain-marie to cook it because it's less, it's less sensitive. The broccoli I'm using is calabrese, and it's already cooked the way you would if you were just eating it normally and I've put 100 millilitres of, of wine in it which should be enough to give it lubrication to puree by the way the amount of wine you need varies according to how soft the, you've cooked the greens As there's too much to go in a single batch, I'm pureeing it in stages and more wine in this one. And I'm including the onion and herbs and spices and the other ingredients in here too. And just puree that, mix the two batches of puree Stir in a lightly beaten egg. Try 
transfer to an oiled oven dish and bake as for the pear patina. If you want to make the version with the chicken, cut it into bite-sized pieces and make a layer in the bottom of the dish before you add the puree. You need about 200 grams of chicken breast fillet.